This is Canon's 28 to 70 millimeter F2L USM lens, a lens that could easily be said to be without peer currently on the market. And while this is easily my favorite lens to shoot with, it is not perfect by far. And this is especially true if you're hoping to use this lens for video. What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to this channel and this mini series on breathing performance. Now I've wanted to do a full review of the 28 to 70 F2 basically ever since I got it, but when push comes to shove, I am not a lens reviewer and more importantly, I'm not sure there's anything I can really add to what's already out there on it. At least not in the form of a complete review. Though, if you are interested in a more detailed look or discussion on this lens, let me know in the comments below. However, that brings me to this video. I recently posted a video looking at breathing and more specifically how it relates to focus position and ultimately how we should probably be talking and testing about it, or testing and talking about it. So since I had everything set up to make those tests and measurements for that video, I thought I would run some of the lenses that I have through the same test protocols and at least get some comprehensive breathing data out there for people to have a look at. Now, if you're new to all of this, you might be wondering, what the heck is breathing? Well, put simply, breathing is a term used to describe a change in angle of view that accompanies focusing. This aberration poses a problem for video shooters where that constant change in composition when focusing can become a distraction. Now, fortunately, purpose vi video, purposely built video and cinema lenses are designed to prevent breathing from happening. Unfortunately for most of us using hybrid lenses on our mirrorless cameras to shoot video, most of our lenses still suffer from this aberration. Now, with that said, my test protocol for all of this is pretty simple. I have a pair of white targets, just a bit of gaffer tape stuck to a black photographic background. The camera is set up so the targets are positioned near the vertical or the edges of the frame centered vertically and a series of shots are made starting from the minimum focus distance and moving out to infinity using my camera's focus bracketing function. Now for completeness, these test images are small JPEGs, though any size JPEG would actually work. And as an aside, there aren't any advantages to using RAW here, so I didn't. I also didn't turn off distortion correction either in part because most of us will have it on anyway, and in part because more lenses these days are forcing us to use it in general. Either way, the magic happens when these JPEGs are taken to some software that I wrote that measures the distance between the centers of the target patches in each of the frames, and then compares these with the target or the distance between the targets for the infinity focus lens. Now by comparing the infinity focus position, which tells us the true focal length of the lens and therefore its true angle of view, the lens, uh, each of the closer positions, I could determine how much the angle of view is changing and plot that against the focus distance and focus position as read out from the camera's metadata. So that is the setup. Now let's look at the data for this lens. At all of the tested focal lengths, there was a significant angle of view shift. In fact, in the worst cases, the shift uh, from this lens is more than I've seen on any other lens that I have tested or own. Looking at the test results, the first thing to notice is that due to its internal focusing design, the angle of view gets wider as you focus closer to the camera. And this happens consistently at all focused lengths uh, or focal lengths that I tested. Additionally, that shift monotonically increases with focal length, with 28 millimeters having the lowest amount of shift and 70 millimeters having the most and it going up incrementally or consistently between them. Now, as for the actual angle of view shifts at 28 millimeters, the total shift is about 9.6 mil percent. And this is the best performing focal length on this lens. When focused at the minimum focus distance, the lens will have an angle of view approximately equal to a 25 millimeter lens. That said, the lens's angle of view changes by about 2% between six feet or two meters and infinity. And the next 2% change happens between about two uh, feet and or 0.6 meters and that previous mark. Zooming up to the 35 millimeter position, we see the same pattern. However, this time the total amount of focus shift is over the entire focusing range has increased to 11.8%. At the minimum focusing distance, this gives us the equivalent of about a 30.9 millimeter lens. Now, as for the shift, the first 2% happens between eight feet or two and a half meters and infinity. And the second 2% happens between there and just over three feet or one meter from the camera. 
Now in practice, this means that I would expect that both of these zoom positions should show around a 2% angle of view change when pulling focus between actors at what I would consider normal working distances in these kinds of focal lengths. Now, moving out to 50 millimeters, the total focus shift is now over 18%. And at the minimum focus distance, that translates to an angle of view equivalent to approximately a 41 millimeter lens. Now, again, the first 2% shift happens between 16 feet or 5 meters and infinity, and the next 2% between there and 6 feet or 2 meters. Finally, at 70 millimeters, the total focus shift is around 23.6%, and the minimum focus distance, the angle of view, is roughly equivalent to a 53.4 millimeter lens. Now again, that first 2% angle of view shift happens between infinity and around 100 feet or 30 meters, and the next 2% is between there and around 10 or 11 feet or just over 3 meters. So with that said, I still don't really have a good picture as to just how to make a recommendation for this or how to qualify this it, it is a lot but i don't know if it's world ending or whatnot so i would make this a cautionary point obviously breathing can be distracting in a scene but so can a lot of other things as well it's also not something that will be a problem in every situation. So while these are numbers, I would urge caution in blindly making decisions based on them alone. That said, my guess and my experience has then been that at 28, 35 millimeters, this lens can be fine at normal distance situations. However, at 50 and 70 millimeters, the breathing effect can become more problematic. A typical sight Tight, a typical single tight shot at about 70 millimeters would require a working distance of around six feet or two meters. And at that distance, the angle of view shift can be quite noticeable even for small movements of say a couple of inches or 10 centimeters. Now, of course, how distracting that change will be depends on the background, the composition, and a lot of other factors. On a solid background, such as what I'm using here, the reality is that it isn't really a problem at all. But adding any kind of detail to the background and that focus shift on a locked off camera and so forth can start to become more problematic. Moreover, with as extreme as the breathing is at 70 millimeters, electronic breathing correction is, well, I won't say it's problematic, but it is certainly pushing things. On a camera like the R6 Mark II, it's not really that big of a problem. The camera has already 50% more resolution than necessary for its 4K output. So losing half of that, while not ideal, still won't have a huge impact on image quality and the camera will still be able to downsample to get there. However, on a camera like the R5 or a cinema camera, the only way to make this work without upsampling would be having a much higher resolution sensor. So for 8K on an R5, you'd actually need a sensor of around 78 megapixels or so to limit the over or output, or, or you could limit the output resolutions to 4K or lower. Neither of which I think are the greatest solutions that I've ever thought of. So to wrap this up, I can't say that this lens can't be used for video. It absolutely can, and I do all the time. You just have to be very careful about your compositions and your need for focus pulls. It's also clear that the design has heavily compromised breathing correction for speed and zoom range. Now, of course, this isn't a problem for still photographers, which I think is what the intended market was for this lens. And the reality is this is in many ways a precedent setting lens. It is the widest focal range with the fastest aperture for any full frame capable zoom currently on the market. There really is nothing out there that's comparable and getting that in a mass produced product at a reasonable, yes, I know $3,000 plus is really expensive, but it's not $30,000 price point will mean that some compromises will have had to have been made in the process. So with that said, this was not intended to be a full review of the RF 28-70 F2 LUSM, though if you would like to see that again, let me know in the comments. If you found this useful, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. And finally, if you'd like to directly support this video and future videos like it, please consider hitting that thanks button if you can, or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.